Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan for what's going to be a pretty exciting episode of Inside the Birds. Obviously, the Eagles are on everybody's mind right now. They make uh, a pretty significant trade fairly early, too. Where uh, And what a day Friday was, right, Adam? Because all of a sudden, <laughs> Miami and San Francisco make this uh, yeah. crazy trade. And then before you get a chance to process it, the Eagles then get involved with Miami. They trade down out of six to 12. And we got hit with a barrage of, uh, you know, tweets and messages on, on YouTube to the point where people are saying emergency live stream, emergency podcast, emergency. And, and hmm. I know we didn't even, we didn't talk about doing one, but I could tell we were on the same page here that I don't know at that point that we would have done anything other than reiterate what was known about the trade. Like we yeah. hadn't done any Intel, no investigation. Plus they're trading down. It's not like they traded up and you knew they were going to get a quarterback that might've warranted oh, a little boy. bit more yeah. analysis from us, yeah. but obviously New quarterback yeah. news is involved in that move and Correct. we'll get into that, but, uh, and we'll, we'll get, we'll give you our reactions. We'll give you what we know. There's a lot to talk about. There's the trade. Oh yeah. God, yeah. There's the Joe Flacco press conference that had everybody up in arms for, for no reason. You know, that's this market, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and um, we'll get into maybe some of the ideas, uh, some what the trade means, the significance of it. And also, you know, the Eagles lost a few players uh, to free agency. So there's just a ton to get into. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll start it off with the trade, Adam. But first, I want to I let everybody know because we're getting so close to the draft and now it's on everybody's four mind. Yeah, four, yeah, four weeks. weeks. This week here uh, starts our first of the six-week installment of Inside the Birds. With, I'm sorry, inside the draft with Greg Cosell. So you and I will be hitting up Greg, and that'll be out Tuesday at 6 a.m. So for the next five weeks, uh, Tuesday at 6 a.m., you're going to hear Greg Cosell, and we're going to have different topics with him every week. Uh, I think the first one will focus on maybe that, that area where the Eagles are at uh, and some prospects that might be in there. And then we'll do more maybe positional and some other things. But, Adam, as you know, and I, I think what's really cool is for the first one, we're going to get in with to into it with Greg about exactly how he came to be Greg Cosell, like what goes into his draft watching, how it's changed, influences because we get asked that a lot, and that that should be fascinating. Yeah, and and this is this is what the, the it's going to be partially about. In addition to getting into draft prospects, by the time you're done with Greg with these six shows, folks, I'm not saying you could be a scout, but you're when you watch tape, whether you watch all 22 or you watch TV copy or you're just watching the game at home with your friends or your family or by yourself, I promise you our mantra of Inside the Birds will drive you the rest of the way. You will be better at watching games after you hear Cosell talk over these next six weeks, I guess, six shows, uh, because you know, part of why we got involved with Greg is to be better at, 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 at our viewing. Not only do we, we break news or give you insight, analysis, and all that stuff based on facts and information, we want you to be a better fan. And this is, and we'll never stop doing this. We're going to keep bringing people in, smart people like Greg, uh, like Qu Quentin Michael, like Jason Avon, and other players, which we're, we'll start uh, getting involved with uh, as we get closer to the season. But th this is, when we started this thing three years ago, uh, th geez, four seasons ago, 18, yeah, 20, oh my goodness gracious, four <laughs> seasons ago, technically. Um, th this is what we wanted to wind up doing, but we just didn't know when we'd be able to do it. And now we can do it, and we're so glad to bring Greg uh, with you for Inside the Draft with Greg Cosell. That's right. Six weeks of it. So, And I'm glad you hit on that. This is what you and I kind of – this was our vision. It's what we pride ourselves on doing, not just bringing what we hear and our angle of it, but also two guys who played the game, in this case, Quentin Michael, Jason Avant, or a guy like Greg Cosell who is regarded as many. And I, I hear NFL people tell me this all the time, and you've said it, that he's one of the best tape evaluators who doesn't work for an NFL team. So the best, actually. They the, yeah, best. the best. They it's trust him. Close. They know he yeah, knows no, his no stuff. No offense. There are a lot of people I like, but it's not close. Um, right. And Greg will explain. That one of the things that I sort of know, but getting to know Greg uh, over the years, he talks to a lot of coaches because he wants to learn he wants to understand that not, not a, he because he didn't play. No, he was actually a college athlete. He played hoops and baseball, I think. I know he definitely played college uh, basketball. Yep. Because they're in his office at in uh, NFL Films. He's got a sweet jumper, man. You can see it. It's like this, and he he uh, was a high school opponent of Ernie Grunfeld, the former Knicks GM, and obviously uh, played with uh, 
Bernard King at University of Tennessee and the New York uh, basketball great. So anyway, that's with Greg there. So can't wait for that. And we look forward to talk to him. There you go. Um, by the way, our podcast is soon coming to the Amazon music platform. <laughs> so stay tuned. If you like to listen to pods on, I oh mean, God, there's a thousand different platforms. Well, there's sports on there. There's yeah, another I, one. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I noticed a couple months ago, I, you know, I must have, I don't know how many songs I have on my phone, probably 300, half of which I don't even listen to. Oh, anyway, <laughs> um, I, I'm like, it's this podcast and I just hit it. I'm like seeing all these sports podcasts. So, you know, I said to you and um, Josh Weinfeld, our business manager, I'm like, why aren't we on there? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should be on there. You know, we're, we, everybody asks, you know, we used to get a lot of emails when we first started uh, in 18 why are we in this platform, this platform? All right, all right, we'll check in. We got it. We got it. We'll check into it. Then we got on every platform. Obviously, YouTube has grown like a mushroom. Uh, but I guess people are watching on, uh, look, you know, on the um, the Amazon uh, app, the music app. So sh- sure, we'll, we're, we'll, we'll be on there very, very soon. And we'll, as soon as it goes live on there, we'll let you know. Yeah, that's my motto. If there's a way to consume our, our platform, I'm all for it. So Hell I'm yeah. looking forward to that, too. Uh, all right, let's get in. One, one of the big reasons that I don't, I think we also didn't do an emergency podcast to talk about the trade is that we're still several weeks from the draft, uh, about a month. And knowing Howie Roseman, I don't know that you can just sit here today and say he's definitely picking at 12. I mean, they're, they're, you know, Howie's known to move. He's already moved down. He's got a lot of assets that he's added. So we have to see going forward um what this what's going to happen i would just keep an eye out and say you know don't don't think a month away from the draft everything is is how it's going to be right now because you just never know but adam let's talk about this because i know people not i agree 100 percent. by the way i just want to say i absolutely agree yeah now i understand at 16 they had the trade we it's funny this is our fourth season doing the show i as much as we talked about the 16th season I don't know how much we talked about the Byron Maxwell to the Miami trade. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I hate to say they fleeced Miami, but Byron Maxwell was, didn't play very well for Chip Kelly. Right. And he didn't play very well for the Dolphins. And then he, like, he was never, I think he, did he go back to Seattle? I don't even remember. I think he did go back the following yeah. year. Did, did okay. Kiko Alonso get thrown in that deal too? Was he? Yes. Yes. And, I'll, and yeah, yeah. He played and, better for Miami. I think he got a contract extension, but he's hurt a lot, right? Exactly. And he's, yeah. he's unfortunate. He's had a bunch of ACL injuries. So right. um, I, I would not roll in anything out. I, I'm not saying they're going to move out of 12, but it would be, it would not be a surprise at all if they moved. I agree just, with you. It's just the, you know, you, you saw what the Dolphins did for goodness sake. Wow. Yeah. They you know, are, Good. Yeah, I was going to say, you also have the Cowboys sitting there at 10. And <laughs> I think they took a little bit of a risk by moving down to the point now where I think the Giants and the Cowboys pick ahead of them, or is it just the Cow? Where do the Giants pick? The About Cowboys 11, are I at think. 10. I'm, gonna, I'll, I'm relatively sure it's 11, but I'm going to look up. Okay, so the, it's 11? Yeah. Uh, hang on one sec. Go ahead. I keep thought it was, yeah, I thought it was 11. I know the Cowboys pick a 10. Um, yeah, and the Giant, Giants pick 11. So I know a lot of people were dissatisfied with the fact that it just so happened to be that the Eagles moved behind their two, you know, their division rival in Dallas. And of course, the Giants who, <laughs> yeah. you know, what are the chances? <laughs> who, yeah, started to really improve at the end of the year. So sure. again, keep in mind that um, they might be looking after similar players. So I wouldn't, again, as you agree, I agree that, you know, we can't sit here today and say they're definitely picking at 12. A lot of people, forget what we do here at ITB or maybe you're new and they they have demanded that we either call Howie Roseman the king god of trading great genius or we say that he is the worst general manager ever and this is the stupidest trade and blah 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 and as we hate to remind people but I think this is why we have the following we do we look at things analytically we talk to people we give you how the league might view it and try to try not to just give our we give our own analysis too and we'll do that but i'm not going to sit here and rip anybody to shreds nor am i going to say that this is the greatest move ever made in in eagles history i see adam merits to both and i see some potential drawbacks to both so that's my reaction i'll get into a little bit more how do you feel about the trade you started off what do you think yeah so when the news broke of both trades i I was kind of like just from a selfish standpoint because i really 
I know that taking a tight end or a hybrid player like Pitts is not the smartest thing to do unless you really super trust your coaches. Mm -hmm. This is a new staff. Obviously, the, the head coach is going to be a play call, calling plays for the first time. But Pitts is so gifted. He's so special. It would have been cool to see him here in Philly, uh, see how they would use him. And look, they could use playmakers. Let's let's call it like it is. They, they need playmakers on this offense. Um, and obviously, it takes them out of the chase race. Now, could they could Pitts drop farther back past six? Absolutely, because beauty's in the eye beholder. I I've talked to a bunch of coaches and they who've, who've graded uh, Pitts's tape. They love they they're blown away by the kid. But some guys, Jeff, think it's a luxury. Like, you don't need to do this. You, yeah, he's a hybrid player. He's not really a tight end. He's not really a receiver. He's a move, he's a move player. I get all that. But everybody loves the player. And the kid is, uh, in terms of character, based on background checks, the character seems to be very, very good. Great. He passes the, the sniff test, as they say. Everything's good so far. But you, there, the only risk is, what is he and how, you, how do you use him? And I, and I understand that the reaction to social media, the immediate reaction was so negative. Oh, how could you do this? See, the, the, the truthers, as I say, the, the pits and uh, chase truthers, they didn't want to hear bleep about any other player. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get any of those two players, they don't want to even watch the draft. They think people suck. <laughs> they, they're terrible. Fire the general manager, fire the front office, fire everybody you can. Get them out of there if you don't get chase or pits. Well, that's not happening right now if they stay at 12, right. folks. So, um I, you know, by the, the draft uh, value chart, the, it, it matches up. It's, it's a good value. And, yes, they have potential to have three first-round picks. That's obviously very, very attractive. They just need Wentz to play 75% of the snaps this season. They're getting a first back instead of a second. Yeah. Or um, 70 and, and, and uh, the playoffs they, the Colts have to make. So there's a pretty decent chance they're going to get a first-round pick. But as you were saying, um, yeah, they they they've got a lot. They've got eleven picks. They moved up from the fifth to the fourth round with the trade with Miami. Uh, they have they have two thirds this year. So you're right. It gives Roseman and the front office a chance if they so choose, if they feel the need to trade up from twelve to whatever. So we'll see what happens. I I just learned never to say never, especially with this general manager, because you just never know what he's going to do. Right. Um. In sixteen, it was a home run. Although in the end, Wentz. Who the hell? I don't yeah, know. What by the way, about. if I can just yeah. say something really quickly, because you, yeah. I don't want to forget this. I, I, yeah. I forget who tweeted it out, but somebody has been talking about the idea of trading up for quarterbacks into the top five, and it now suddenly becoming a cautionary tale because Carson Wentz and Jared Goff are no longer with their teams. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't buy that for a second. Both I of those quarterbacks, yeah, they're not with their teams, but they both help lead their team to a Super Bowl. Um, and neither exactly. can I say is the chapter of their story for, is is written. It's not over. I mean, I know there are not a lot of huge Goff fans, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you he's going to be a failure in Detroit. He may have a very nice career there if they build around him the correct way. And obviously, you and I feel that Carson Wentz is in a position where he can be rebuilt in Indianapolis and have a lot of success there. Be. So yeah. the idea that it's a cautionary tale now to trade into the top five and trying to lump those two quarterbacks with Sam Darnold and some other guys who did not, that that's that's BS to me, to be honest with you. So I don't, yeah, I don't think they, there's anything cautionary if you really identify a guy it, you it, like. It's revisionist really like. history. It, it's exactly. like it, but now I do understand how people would say, you know, this is the new the, the new talk is the fair talk is, do you need to extend first round quarterbacks early after what happened with Wentz and Goff? And I understand both. I think that's a fair assessment. I have no problem with that. If you want to bring that up, that's where, you know, the Browns now with Andrew Berry, who was here in Philly for a season, he needs to make a decision on Mayfield, whether he wants to extend him early or not. Now, now they can, that he's played three seasons. So that's something they don't need to do it. There's quite frankly, I wouldn't do it. He looks like he had a good season. Uh, Baker Mayfield really rebounded after a brutal um, stretch there. He was actually pretty serviceable, pretty, pretty good, but you don't need to do anything. See, the reason why teams do it early is because you get such a discount at least theoretically. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, when it blows up in your face by five years into it, you go, oh, man, why did they do it? I, I understand the revisionist history, but it's just not fair. Uh, of course. Like I say, everybody should be so lucky as – well, lucky or however you want to call it – as the Seahawks to be able to get a championship-level quarterback in the second round. And then when you third do round. give them the yeah, extension – I'm sorry, third round, right. Yeah. Uh, when you do get give the extension after three years, you're literally putting a lot of that 
signing new new money into the fourth year of a rookie deal that's only like two hundred and thirty thousand dollars to begin with. So it's it's very very obviously there are no so many options. Right. That's, right. Yeah. You're right. right. You're right. Um, all right. So I have a hard time in general just saying a trade either like this is either awesome or sucks because the outcomes are really yet to be determined. You have no idea who's going to go where and who's going to get what, I, what my chief concern was doing, Adam was making sure that I knew that this was an equitable trade as far as value. So the first thing I did was uh, I know a guy who does analytics projects for both the NFL and college football team. So he's very well-versed in trade chart value, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. forth, so on. And I asked him, how does this compare? You know, you trade a first, then the fourth to get uh, a first next year. And what else did they get? They, they traded the first and fourth to get a future first. Is that how it works? Yeah. So, so the, here's the trade. I guess we might as well say it. So the Eagles got 12th pick overall. Mm -hmm. They got a fourth rounder this year, 123. Right. And they got Miami's first round pick next year. Right. Uh, the Dolphins got number six overall, which is the Eagles pick. And they got a fifth rounder. So the Dolphins moved back from the fourth to the fifth. Mm-hmm. And they they moved from twelve to six. All right. So, so the what, Eagles, yeah, the Eagles. Their net gain was that they moved from Eagles' net gain was they moved from the fifth round to the fourth round, mm -hmm. and they got an extra first round or twenty two. Now the the only problem is the Dolphins were on the precipice of the playoffs. They were ten and six, or right there. So they're probably going to be a good football team. So it's probably not going to be a very good first round. Or that it's fair to bring that up. Because I remember talking to the Raiders when they traded Mac away. They were kicking their heels up. The Bears are going to suck. Yep. Well, they didn't suck. I know. I know. You can never Maybe. predict these things. Like Miami. No, exactly. And injuries and be don't. terrible. Or they could be – they could go uh, to the Super Bowl. Who knows? You know, you right. But do, know. the Dolphins, although Tua needs to play better, they, mm -hmm. they certainly are very competitive. The Brian Flores has done a great job, though. We could question the way he's yo-yoed Tua, pulling him from two games. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. Dolphins are so stacked with picks. Um. You know, the the, the, the belief run league is I asked some people I trust. I said, what are, you, what are your first thoughts? And two guys said to me, absolutely, the drafting receiver. Absolutely. At six, if they mm -hmm. stay there. Because they'll take Chase or they'll take one of the Alabama receivers, which is fair. Or that they don't need, really need a tight end. Um, they could take the hybrid tight end. Yeah, so, they could. We'll they just take the best player that you got. I mean, exactly. if Dolphins sure. linemen do that and they get the weapons later, yeah. they have so many picks, the Dolphins, that Crazy. they can just afford to, to stick yeah. by their guns. So once the guy told me that the, the yeah. value was fair, that it was good, mm -hmm. it works from a, a trade chart standpoint, mm -hmm. then I say, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so people want to either love or hate or say it's great or it's not great. But the way I see it, if it's equitable, Adam, you're just – have, you have two different scenarios, right? I mean, you have a, a number six pick, which is very high, or you're, you're picking later. You're going to pick a different caliber player, most likely. You never know. But you get the future first. So here's how I see it. It's a loose analogy, but I think it works in this situation. It's like if I gave you $100, right? And I say, Adam, you can either spend $100 today or you get 50 today and 50 tomorrow. You don't get to, you know, intersperse, right? If you get the 100 today, you can buy something a lot better, something that costs $80, $90, $100. But if you do 50 on Monday and Tuesday, you obviously can't get the really nice thing, but you can buy more. Uh, you can buy a, two $25 things, five $10 things, right? Okay. So that's my point here is that, yes, the Eagles could have had a guy at six that theoretically, statistically, historically is going to be, if you hit it right, an elite playmaker or, or a, an elite player, because that's where most of your pro bowl and all pro players come from that top 10. They're out of the top 10. However, they've got more to more assets. Now, maybe they're not going to hit on the, the quote unquote hall of famer, but they got a chance to get some pretty good players. And then again, do it next year. So it's just about how you want to devote your resources. So I have no problem if someone says, well, I don't like this trade, because I, for, for the Eagles, they don't very often pick in the top five, top 10. So, and they don't have a lot of elite playmakers. And so it would have been nice for them to be able to get a Pets, I, I wanted I to see Pets. No problem with that. Nor Again. do I have a problem with yeah. saying, you know what? They've just put themselves to help rebuild the foundation of this team by adding more picks, some picks for next year that could help them have movement in the first round. It's just the, however you slice it. There's no like, right or wrong here what what makes it right or wrong is three years down the road when you go back and look at how the guy did at number six versus how the eagles use their 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 picks that that's all right so again 
it's 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 either you're you're that there's a crowd and there's definitely a percentage of Eagle fans that wanted Jamar Chase or Pitts. Simple as that. They wanted either or not anybody else, and they're super pissed off. There's nothing. The Eagles could have gotten five first round picks. They don't care. They they don't understand value. They don't understand how you build a football team. They just want Chaser Pitts. Right. Okay. The smart fan says, okay, I want a Chaser Pitts, but I get it. That's what I saw on Saturday and Sunday on social media. Um, they're still a little bit pissed, but they get it. The team was terrible last season. This team is lacking of star power for the future because of the 17 draft. We've called it the sins of the 17 draft. I don't know how many times now. Yeah. Makes me I stole that from somebody, but I love that one. That's my one of my favorite phrases. Sorry, but I think it's funny because of all the not only the misses, it's just how's Donnell Pumphrey doing these right, days? Right. It's it's <laughs> Pumphrey's supposed to be sprawls. If you go through all the picks, yeah. And and the comments, something we didn't talk a lot about is the comments we got from other teams on that draft. <laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah. So yeah. so anyway, and you know, the 18 draft, yes, the most of the players they kept look like they're gonna be pretty good, but they you still only had five picks. Correct. 19 didn't have a 19. They didn't have a ton of picks as well. Right. Well, they had Dillard. So he's barely played. And right. they, yeah, they, um, oh man, I can't even remember. No, that's the JJ Ortega white side in the second miss. round. That's and, a miss already. You know, yep. That's a miss. And of course, Miles Sanders looks pretty good. Uh, I already forgot who they, I don't think they back, though. He, he was not as good as they would have hoped last season. He needs to be better. He does need to be better. Uh, I still think that it's hard to evaluate anybody last year with how dysfunctional they were. Yes, I, I, I get it. Of course they do need to be I, better. You know, the, the thing I would say about 21 is, and you're with Sanders I- included, mm-hmm. if you look, other than Josh Sweat, if you went through both sides of the football, how many players improved on that former coaching staff? We've talked about this a bunch about the lack of player development mm-hmm. on that coaching staff. Now, right. some of them just were missed picks over the last whatever amount of years. Some were whatever you could, we've talked about J.J. Ortega, White's on some other players. Right. But some should have been given a better chance, and the coaches either held, held something against them or they were not, they just simply wanted instant gratification. They wanted the guys to be good early on. And they and part of it is also, there was some self-preservation. They just, these guys wanted to keep their jobs. And it's like, nope, this guy's smart. I'm playing him. Nate Gary, <coughs> um, guys like that. Yeah. That's just unacceptable. And the hope is with this new staff, we don't see that stuff. Right. But we'll see what Sirianni does. We just don't know enough about him and his yeah. staff about, how they're going to hold players accountable because of the, and how patient they're going to be. I mean, he's a new coach. So, so hopefully there won't be pressure to play any players. They just develop these guys, coach them up and develop them. Yeah. And by the way, d- the rest of that 2019 draft sucked as well. So after it was, uh, you know, Sanders was the only, so far, the only good one of the first three picks. Yep. Dillard's not played. Ortega Whiteside, not good. Sharif Miller in the fourth round, Clayton yes. Thorson in the fifth round. Yes. So, just a crappy yeah. draft, to be honest. Was that, was that their whole draft? I don't know yeah. Two straight years. They've, they've See, that's again. Ticking, picking five five guys. Exactly. In the you awful. can't do that. Terrible. How does that happen, back-to-back drafts? Well, I don't know. But this this time around, they got 11 this year. They and it looks like year? they're going to have a bunch. Of, yeah, they had about t- nine or ten last year. I forget because they made some yeah. moves. Yeah. But, yeah, they had more last year. And they'll have more over the next two years as they try to rebuild. So I remember saying recently, Adam, and I feel like now it's prescient, is that – the interesting thing about the Eagles picking at six is that the where it looked like the players, how it looked like early the board might fall, did not align with really what the Eagles value when they pick in the top 10. I mean, they only picked in the top 10, I think, four times since 99 and or 98. Mm. You got Trey Thomas, Donovan McNabb, Carson Wentz, Lane Johnson. So two quarterbacks. Two offensive ones. Pretty good. By the way, That those are pretty good. <laughs> good picks. Yeah, definitely good picks. But the point is, we, we know is that the Eagles, when they pick that high, even if you want to bring it out to 12 where Fletcher, yeah. Fletcher Cox went and Brandon Graham was oh, around there. he was 12, Fletcher, right? Right, right. It's usually a quarterback or an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, right? And in this case, it didn't look like at six they were going to be able to get a quarterback. And I don't, I don't, you know, if, if what's this, certainly no pass rushers, right? We're, yeah, and we're going to go over that. I, I've, um, I spent really the last week get it, just giving an uh, getting teams to the guys that I trust. Just give me an idea of where, what areas you th- give me the numbers you think they'll go over. They, they'll go, and it just so happened that the Eagles make this trade. I'm like, great, I have this stuff for the show. I didn't know the Eagles were going to make a trade, right? At least not this early. Now the Wentz trade with Cleveland happened in March of uh, 16. So yeah. hey, 
yeah. which was a obviously that you know that that set everything up and sure uh, we'll guess, go over yeah, that the, in a second. So, so let's go. What I was just right. really trying to make though was that it, I could see why they jumped out because it just where what they look for in the top twelve compared to what was there. The only thing you could say is offensive line and and uh, the kid from uh, Sewell from Oregon might be there, but you never know if the Bengals are going to take the, him at five because they sure. really take an offensive lineman. Sure. So you sure. can see how how he's looking at this situation and saying I can either go with the where the values that I draft the line, or I could try to get one of these elite playmakers. And he just obviously chose the other door and to get more picks. And, and we'll see how that happens. So, so here are the draft picks as of now round one, 12th overall for Miami round two is theirs 37th overall round three. They have two picks number 70, which is theirs number 84 from, for the Wentz trade from the Colts. So they've got four picks at the top 84, which is the first three rounds fourth round where they moved up with Miami. They've got 123 overall. Fifth round is theirs, 150 overall. Sixth round, 189, which is theirs. 224 and 225 are back-to-back comp picks. Seventh round is number 234 overall, which is theirs. And 240, well, that's from the trade revision with Marquise Goodwin. <laughs> so so that there you go. So, so they've got 11, a one, a two. Total picks. 11, yep. A one, a two, two threes, a four, a five, three sixes and two sevens for a total of 11. And as, as Jeff and I've said, they may not be done. Who knows? We'll yeah, see. I guarantee you this. I don't know if they're going to wind up moving up. Like, you know, it's, it, yeah. so we'll see, but I, I guarantee you this, they will not make, I, I very, very highly doubt they'll make 11 picks. They're going to, they're going to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I would be shocked if they made 11. I, I just think they need so much help that I could see them packaging picks to move up to a player that drops during the draft. I, yep. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I, um, but, but I would say this. Do not finish the draft with six picks. Like, oh, like, no, 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 no. They've got to make I, it I am, eight picks. I don't, again, I don't care what teams do. I'm not a fan. But I'm sick and tired of these teams doing stuff like that, mm-hmm. especially when you're bad. You're coming off of four uh, – 4-11-1. Did they have a tie last season? I can't remember. Yeah, they were 4-11-1. 4-11-1, right. Right. It's amazing how much I forget. Well, my long-term memory is good, but I know I can't remember what I did yesterday. This is what happens when you turn in your 50s, folks. If you haven't gotten there, those of you over 50 know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, just, just have a good amount of picks because when you look at their needs board, right, I updated it. It's a, it's, I've adjusted a little bit from just getting – talking to people of, of uh, grade of the roster again. We know they're going to add another quarterback. We said that the last show. They have to have three. We know they have to add a power back. They need a back with size. We we've all we all know that. I'm behind Miles Sanders. They need to add two receivers. They need to add an X. And at some point, could you get a veteran? Could you get somebody in there who's done it before? We had a great post on the um, on our YouTube, the uh, the live stream. Someone asked, um, can't remember the guy's name, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. But he asked an amazing question. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the rules are going to be for practice squads, where they're going to adopt um, last year's rules, which you would think with COVID numbers still not good enough. They're not down enough. You would think they're going to have the revised practice squads where there's not a lot of restrictions. So this guy said, it's a great point. He goes, look, how about I'm doing what the Eagles did with, with Josh McCown as an emergency um, quarterback. Now, Josh was living at home, folks. <laughs> but how about Eagles having a – if they're not going to get a veteran on the roster, how about having a veteran on the practice squad – just to, just to be – well, to me, I would take this one – I think it might be Paul White was his name. I can't remember now offhand. I know I think it was last time it was White. But anyway – I'm sorry. Did you say Paul White? Paul White. I think Not the Undertaker, was. Paul White, right? No, no. Paul White was uh, – the, the wrestler <laughs> not... Paul is uh, Big Show. Big, Big show. show. That's what I meant. And he spells yeah. it differently. This is actually W-H-I-T-E, though. Oh, okay. Just making I think sure. his name was. Anyway. I can't sorry. let a wrestling it, reference slip by you anyway. Right. You know? W-I-G-H-T was the wrestler, I think. Right. I, see, I know stupid stuff. The minutia, as my <laughs> wife says, I knew I know names. I don't know why I know this, these names, wrestling names, but anyway. Um, so the, the the issue here is with a veteran receiver, do they need anyone? Yeah, you want to you want someone who could, could be good for that room, show them how it's done. They're very young at receiver. It's not a bad thing, but it'd be nice to have like Mohamed Sanu who went back to the Niners, to have somebody who could show you how it's done, who's done it before, that's at maybe at the end of their career left, that, that players will respect. Uh, we, we know they need two tight ends. After they trade Ertz, they're going to need two tight ends. They need 
two linemen, one one way or the other, they need a veteran or they need two young guys, developmental guys. How many D tackle? Would you say two? Um, I, you know, I hate to put a number on these kind of things. Right. I don't want them reaching for a player because they're fine. They're, um, well, they don't have any depth at D tackle, man. They have no, they have no depth. They, I, and look, they the, again with when you have eleven picks and when you know that the Eagles value offense and defensive line as much as they yeah. do. I know they're coming out of here with at least one, I would say at least two defensive linemen. I don't know. It'll, they'll both be tackles. One might be a rusher, yeah. an edge rusher. One might be a tackle, but they're coming out with at least two linemen. I'm, I'm absolutely, okay. I'm as confident that they're coming out with at least two defensive linemen as I am that they're not going to take a safety in the first, second or third round. Okay. And you know how confident <laughs> I am about that. Yourself. So, so let me just assure you. You couldn't help yourself. <laughs> you couldn't help yourself. All right. Let, uh, let me yeah, ask so, you about quarterback a little bit, unless you yeah. want to, anything else here no i just want to say mm -hmm. i agree with jeff here one way or the other they got to get a d out of this draft now linebacker it depends on how many picks they got to get the, you'd like them to get two linebackers out of this draft a safety to make most sure happy i don't disagree a developmental oh, safety be happy picking a fifth round six round safety i mean you're gonna have me complain <laughs> <laughs> you want that's all they and do and then three outside corners again one way or the other whether it's drafting two we're signing two veterans. We're drafting two corners. They got to have three outside corners. They only have one guy who could play right now. That's Slay. Right. Well, there's a name that we've been forgetting, by the way, at corner. Somebody reminded me of it, and I've already forgotten it again. It's, can we look at the the Philadelphia Eagles roster real quick? Um, Michael Jaquette? No, no. I can't believe I'm forgetting this. Craig guy. James. Some, Craig James. And I. Yeah, and the reason why. Corner. But yeah, listen, I know a... the reason why we have to pay a little bit of attention to that is because didn't he yeah. play? with the Vikings a couple of years ago. He did. That's a great point. Yeah. Why the hell don't we talk about the rest of the I know. Yeah. I was kicking myself when, uh, when him, I Harris and apps do have, obviously have a defense. Great point you make. Right. That's um, true. But again, he's a fourth corner. He could play nickel. He could play outside, but folks, he's again, <laughs> a fourth corner. If, if, if you're good with your top three, he's a fourth guy. That's what you ideally let him be your fourth corner. Get you out of bad spot for a couple of games, but if you're going to have him as a six or seven game starter, you're, it's going to be a problem. Right? No, I agree. I mean, they're all like Michael Jaquette, Jameson Houston. I know they signed Lavert Hill. I think he was on the practice squad. Craig James, Kevon Seymour. I mean, everybody on that list is a fourth or a fifth corner. They're I, all fourth or fifth. That. <laughs> that's what they. That's why I said you got to get three. Come on. I agree. Um, all right, I want to talk a little bit about the quarterback situation, what this all means for Jalen Hurts yeah. and going forward. First, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 if the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win. That's $1 into $100 all if the college basketball team of your choice pulls off the win by using that promo code ITB on the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. So as we sit here today, and I, I can't, you know, I mean, one of the first thoughts I had when the trade went down and you start to see the stockpiling of first round picks here, Adam, is and something we talked about recently is the whole Deshaun Watson thing. Now, he's got a whole lot of legal stuff oh. that has to be sorted out. It's but, I don't see him being moved at all. Well, I mean, yeah. you just never know. I mean, this thing could g g get worse or it could just be end. I have no idea. But the point is, when you have the future first, like you, you can wait if in a month from now, even after the draft. Right. Something you hope you know more. Right. 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 So but, they, but you they hope have the ammunition yeah. there, certainly to compete if 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 they're will if they want to pull the trigger now. Yes. They, though, look, it's it's been rumored, reported, whatever. Jeff and I know the same thing. The Eagles have had interest to watch. It's not a secret to anybody. Right. Um, I don't see how any team could trade for him until you 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 have to know what you're dealing with. First of all, you have to know if you're going to have him this season. You have to know if he's going to be suspended or not. Um, he's been charged with anything. That's definitely true. But you, he doesn't. He does not need to be charged to be suspended. That's just history of uh, with Roger Goodell. So we we have to see what happens as you go on the commissioner's special exempt list. There's a lot we have to learn about the situation with Deshaun Watson and uh, the accusations. What's been alleged, and we'll, we'll look over the next four weeks. More information is going to come out, whether it's positive or negative. Where we'll we'll if we think the Eagles are involved, we'll let you know. Are you convinced right now that Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback going into 2021 season? No, no. I'm, I'm convinced I, he's I, the he's lead convinced. candidate right now. But I, yeah, 
I'm so not convinced. Do I think he will be? Probably. I'd put the percentage. I'm not a, never been a percentage guy. Right. I'd put it certainly. I, it's definitely better than 50%. I'm not willing to go 100. I'm not even willing to go 80 right now. I'm just going to. That's fair. I just, I want to see what happens. I, I, I just, there's a lot that could happen. Mm-hmm. There's, we, we don't know yet. We're four weeks out. This is not the Carson Wentz golf decision, which we, we all knew in 16. This isn't the. That one was not a secret. They didn't even, the Eagles didn't hide anything. It was either going to be either or. They didn't deny anything. We knew it was coming down to those guys. Because this is when they remember the caravan in March. Right. They made the decision with everybody out there. They 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 worked both guys out. They had dinner mm-hmm. with them, spent time with them, chalkboard, all that. Right. They were convinced after that trip it was Wentz. Okay. Right. This time, they've now traded back from 6 to 12. They've got the ammunition if they so choose to trade up. Now, here's the question. If they don't make a trade... Uh, if they stay at 12 heading into the draft, and again, we don't know yet if they like Fields or not. Fields, I a, a value chart, which we're going to get to in a minute. Fields is a guy that could go anywhere from 3 to 12, okay? What if they are 12 and he keeps dropping? And what if they, we know, what if we find out they like him? Well, mm-hmm. they could trade up. Absolutely. So I think you make a great point. And I would also say if the Eagles were picking in the top three of this draft, I'm not sure they would have moved down. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I haven't had anybody come out and definitely tell me that, but I just feel like they, they're, I mean, we know Steichen and Brian Johnson were at the BYU pro day. Sure. Okay. We know those two guys were also at the pro day for um, Lance and we'll see what happens at Ohio state's pro day, which is, I want to say Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it? Yeah. It's Tuesday. this week. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll see who goes and what happens. I'm just, I, not that look, that's an indication. That's no, 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 indication no, 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 not at all. I'm not going to say, oh, if you see Howie Roseman there, I'm not going to all of a sudden be like, whoa, hey, but that would be. Right, exactly, right. right. But it's worth been, noting. Obviously, yeah. it would be worth noting. Yeah, but I'm with you. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I know that there are uh, big Jalen Hurts supporters, which there should be. I mean, I have no problem with anybody supporting I personally would like to see more of them. I, I, I would love to. I would love to. I would, to. but I, I just know as a reporter. Thank and you. And knowing how I know this team for 21 years, I just know, and particularly this front office and – um, just people who work for the Eagles for years. I just know that, and I know how the owner thinks. I've talked to the owner before over the years, Jeffrey Lurie. Yes. Um, you've talked to him. Yep. A lot of reporters locally and nationally have talked to him. Yes. He's a guy who believes in this quarterback position. And I know he was involved in the uh, Hertz, you know, decision to draft him. Not a secret. We reported right after the draft. Uh, doesn't mean that they think four games is enough. It's not enough to evaluate him. It's, it's right. just not. That's a fact. I agree with you. I don't know. I was trying to um, kind of have this kind of conversation with someone on Twitter, which I don't normally do anymore. And I, <laughs> I'm not going to do anymore. Good luck. Um, about, I don't answer. That's why I don't get involved because you can't. Yeah. It, and, it, and I keep combating it, the idea that you have to give Jalen Hurts a year because you picked him in the second round. And I keep saying, no, you don't, you don't have to. And I explain why. And what did you say? What did you, I didn't say it. What did you just say? because if you have an opportunity to get a guy, draft a guy who you think is going to be much better then you jump on that touchdown. And Bill Polian said it to me. What I ha- what, what what's difficult for them to upgrade. understand is that's you not my opinion, upgrade. right? Just like you're talking about with Bill Polian, that's not my opinion only. It's my opinion from being a reporter and talking over years and years to GMs and coaches. Now, if you disagree with that point that I'm making, then you disagree with these coaches and executives who believe that, and that's fine. You can have that. But the guy was trying to say you're making a bad point, Jeff. And I'm like, it's not my point. This is. This is like, go look at second round picks in the history in the last 10 years. Go look at the picks, uh, second round quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, some it's of bad. Them, oh, it's some bad. of them are terrible. Oh, some of them are okay. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, like, look, here, I, I've got it right here in front of me because yeah. we were talking about it. Uh, and we're, we know that um, Jalen Hurts went 53 overall. A couple of years earlier, the pack, I'm sorry, the Browns took Deshaun Kaiser, 52 overall. Oh. Buck Eisweiler, 57 overall. Jimmy Garoppolo went 62. That's great. He had to sit for, for many years and wound up getting traded. Hackenberg, 51 overall. Clawson, 48 overall. Drew Locke, 42nd. Geno Smith, 39th. Derek Carr, 36. Kaepernick, 36. Kevin Cobb, Dalton, 35. <laughs> I'm just in the last 10 years. So the best yeah, of the yeah, last 10 years are Kaepernick, Dalton, and Derek Carr. Okay, that's great. Kaepernick that's great. had great. I mean, <laughs> we know how it ended, unfortunately, but he definitely had success. But sure, yeah, Kaepernick he, went to a Super Bowl. Bad. He's the only one that went to a Super Bowl. Uh, Dalton has been to playoffs. Derek no, Garoppolo did. Garoppolo I'm sorry, with the Niners. Yeah, Garoppolo. The other team. Two of them right. went to a Super Bowl, right. None of them have won it. And I've got about six guys here who are just terrible. 
between Kaiser, Osweiler, Hackenberg, Clausen, Geno Smith. I mean, it's just not good. So I'm, I'm just telling you, that's why, that's why executives and coaches say, if I have a chance to get myself a guy who's going, who I, who I project me and my staff project that this person will be a five, six, seven time pro bowl, or has that championship pedigree, whether it's J- uh, Justin Fields or whether it's Kai, uh, uh, Zach Wilson or anybody else, they do it. So that, that my only point is nothing is really ever owed to a guy who was picked in the second round. I'm sorry if people believe that, but the reality is in the NFL, the NFL doesn't believe that. Coaches and executives don't <laughs> believe that. Yeah, it's really, again, it's it's about if you feel like you get an upgrade, you go do it. You just don't worry about what other people think. Right. But you better be right. You, you better got, be you right. Do have and to the be Niners right. trading up to three. Do you have two future firsts? You better be right with that quarterback because they're not getting Zach Wilson, by the way. Zach Wilson will either go to the Jets or the Jets will trade out of that pick and that team will trade up. We'll get Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a GM tell me, actually a former GM tell me within the last two weeks, if Lawrence is one, Zach Wilson is one A, and he said, "I he goes, I want to let make this clear to you. I know nothing about the character. I'm just going by tape study of every single pass that Wilson has thrown, and he's seen a he he didn't say that he's seen every pass by Lawrence, but he's seen a lot of them mm-hmm. all off coaching tape. Mm-hmm. He goes, I love this Wilson kid. He says I didn't know much about him before I went in, and he he's not concerned about the um, the level of competition, which is fair to bring up. But sure. as Bill Pauling told me years ago, it is so far down the list." of um of attributes he said it's definitely on the list of when you evaluate but it's way down he goes people w- put way too much uh importance on level competition it's about traits and ability to throw accurately yes on time and if you've got juice in your arm great that that's another right and let, let me add to that adam there's another thing that is not my opinion not your opinion what we're constantly told that some people disagree with for whatever reason Nobody in the NFL, the coaches, the executives, talent evaluators don't care about awards, positional awards, Davey oh, O'Brien Heisman. awards. Luke, Even the Heisman zero. does Literally not. Zero. I, I, I've asked this of many, many people. I'm not giving you my opinion. They don't give a rat's ass if you won the Davey O'Brien award or you're the Outland Trophy winner or even if you're the Heisman. There have been plenty of guys who have won the Heisman who couldn't play in the NFL. So it, it's not like, I'm sure some say, oh, he's a great leader. He might've won this, you know, like a great student athlete that factors a little bit into the evaluation, but no one's saying we're going to put this guy over this guy. Cause he won the Heisman. Just, that, that doesn't happen. It's just, I know, I know people want to think it does, but it really doesn't. No, it, it's about, it, it's all about the tape folks. 75% of the greatest tape and it's everything else. Yes. The tape character. Exactly. Right. You know, we will. Oh, and we're going to, we're going to, you know what? We need to get Polian on before the draft. I'm going to try to get Bill on. Okay. We got to do it. Um, yeah. I'm. I, I got to. I haven't talked to him in a while. We definitely need to reengage. He's so phenomenal. Um, maybe we'll get Banner on too. But, um, all right. So, so go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say. I was, was going to say the cool thing about where the Eagles are at now, Adam, is that we kind of take the the lens off the two guys that we've kind of wasted two weeks talking about with Pitts and Chase. Although you never I know, know. Isn't that crazy. It really is. That's just the Eagle. That's what that's life following the Eagles, whether you're a fan or just when or you think, opponent. right. Just when you think, you know, <laughs> no. you absolutely have no idea. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Anyway. So um, it shines light on, on some prospects and we'll get into this more as we get closer to the draft. But I mean, obviously when you're, when you're at 12 and you're looking in that 10 to 15 range, it brings to names like, Patrick Sertain. I know everybody asks us about the two Alabama wide receivers. Do you so, want to get into the, the value board? Because I've got the value board. You want to get into that? As far as positional or? Yeah. Well, what it okay. is, is, and it's a great question. We got, they're all the same questions that we got. And it's exactly what I was thinking. I was saying earlier how I had been working on this before. I knew the Eagles were going to trade from six to 12, but I expanded it because I have value grades on the top 20 players. I couldn't tell you where they're going to, I don't know who's going to draft them, but I've got the area, like for instance, Lawrence, we know is one, Wilson's two, Justin Fields picks three through 12. That's the area. Mac Jones is three through 15. Mm -hmm. Wow, three Um, through 15. What a range that is. Well, here's the problem. Okay, here's (laughs) the problem with Mac Jones. He's interviewed incredibly well. Everybody loves him. Super intelligent, high character, Alabama program, Nick Saban, process as well. Get out of the chalkboard. You know, teams who interview, I talked to one team. One coach told me he's the best player he's ever interviewed, but there's one done throw it that well compared to the other guys. Mm. And that is, 
That's kind of crazy to me because when I see him him throw, I see all these Devontae Zach Smith and hell, Jalen but... Waddle and, and Henry Ruggs touchdowns, and he threw them. I know. Them. <laughs> I know. But, but here's, what the, here's what the people said at the Alabama Pro Day. Mm-hmm. And this is why you go to Pro Day if you're going to evaluate a quarterback. You want to see how they snap it off, how the ball comes out of their hands. You know how – was Mac Jones a Pro Day great? Yeah, it was. But he was exactly what teams thought. He doesn't drive the football. At the next level, whether it's bad weather – um, the, the defenses, as we know, are way harder to decipher. And you've got to drive the football sometimes. We'll talk to Greg Cosell about this. I'm curious what uh, Greg thinks. But you can't knock his accuracy. He's phenomenal, and he's a great kid. And great senior ball week, by the way. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't guarantee you should be a top for the, the draft pick. However, because he's a quarterback, I hate to say he overdrafted, watch him be an all-pro, but he's going to be drafting the, the upper half of the draft. I'm just t- he's not getting past mm-hmm. – just because he's he's an Alabama quarterback. When I say that, he's an SEC quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's gifted. He's very talented. He's a good player. But the reason why he shouldn't go in the top ten is because his arm is simply not good enough. And but these guys get well overdrafted also, all the time. And right? he's not like a what's he's that? Not a great mover in the pocket as well. Correct? No, he, and that's it. I'm sorry. You're right. The other thing, he doesn't move all that well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that'll be interesting because I have a feeling because he is a very he's an accurate quarterback. I I have a feeling oh, super accurate. If right. he lands with in the middle, like not you know top five, but goes like eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, somewhere to a team that's actually not that bad and may have a decent line and some weapons, like Carolina, right? They've got some pretty good weapons out there. They probably need some help on the offensive line. Oh, but, they're loaded receiver, right? Yeah, they, I can, they need I, ten I can help. See him doing all right. I, I can yeah, see. Yeah. Th- yeah, their line is bad. They they need help there. Um, I, I just uh, – I'm going to be interested to see. So, in receiver, the value board, Jamar Chase, four, four, either picks four or five. Um, I don't even think he makes it to six. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised. Um, Jalen Waddell is a little bit – this surprised me when I, when I ran it by coaches and then by personnel people. Just about everyone I spoke with believes that Waddle's a better football player than Smith. It's just based strictly on tape study. Same here. Smith's problem is he's you know, six feet, between six and six one, and he's one seventy. But it's funny I'm going to talk about this. But with his shirt off, for a skinny guy like he is built, sort of right. But he's got to put weight on. You 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 worry about that, right? You do worry about his um, overall weight. So uh, Waddle, they're both. Waddle was the fastest player in GPS last year mm-hmm. uh, in college football, so, who wore, you know, obviously the in the pads at right wide receiver. So Devontae Smith, I, I see 7 to 12, right, was where I put his round range. Mm-hmm. Folks, I'm not saying they could, one of these guys can't go at three. Well, they won't. The Niners are not taking a receiver at the three. But I'm just telling you what NFL people think. Kyle right. Pitts picks 4 to 10. Sewell, 4 to 11. Slater, man, Rashawn Slater – is an absolute stud Northwestern offensive lineman. Throw out that he plays for Northwestern. This kid is an absolute stud. I'm so old. I remember his, his dad who played uh, in the NBA for many years. Oh, the, t- Terry? No, what was the dad? Reggie, I think it might be Reggie Slater. Reggie Slater, right. I don't know why I said yeah. Terry. Um, I've had a few people say, don't be surprised if he's the first tackle taken in the draft. So. Well, now again, now where you like, now he's really a guard right tackle he projects to. I'd be surprised if he played left. I haven't tackle. heard that. Sewell okay, some people is. think uh, he's more of a technician than Sewell, so that you can put him at left yeah. tackle, and you'll, you know, you won't mm-hmm. get, you know. So we'll we'll see. I mean, you know, those Northwestern yeah. guys are normally fundamentally he's, sound. He's oh, super duper duper smart. Um, the teams that have interviewed him have been blown away. Right. Uh, I I see him going from picks eight to sixteen. All right, Micah Parsons four to twelve. Now here's a question, Mr. Penn State. <laughs> You saw he ran a four three six, right? Away, 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 away. <laughs> now Parsons is not a pure linebacker. He's going to be a hybrid player, right? Is there any chance at twelve if the Eagles stay there that you think they would consider him? Just if curious. Jonathan well, Gannon was making the pick, maybe. Oh, Gannon was. <laughs> Look, I'm yeah, not, there's I, your uh, I, Anthony I, Barr. I think sure. the only way I could see it happening, <laughs> two things would have to happen. One, like both offensive tackles that we just mentioned, Slater and Sewell, would have to be gone. I think certain and horn jc horn would probably have to be gone we'll get to him in a second yeah. and at that point and i also think quitty pay who, who people should pay attention to have to be would have to be gone and then what howie right. would have to do is do i take parsons or trade down if somebody's willing to trade up i don't know who'd be willing to trade up at that point i don't know if a quarterback slid but um 
that would be the only way that I could see them maybe taking Micah Parson. I'd put that at less than 3%. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, pay to me would be a fine pick at 12. As a matter of fact, I think that's the latest he would go. Uh, I thought when I first started on this, because I'm, I'm trying to learn these players and you know get opinions. I thought for sure 20 to 25, and I had one guy say, are you out of your mind? Are you high? I'm like, I don't know. I'm asking you. So he goes, oh, no, he'll go He'll go anywhere from 5 to 12. I'm like, really? Well, I'll tell you why. A, he's 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 pretty good. I mean, yeah, that goes without probably. saying, right? Yeah. But B, you've got the law of supply and demand working yep. in his favor. That's why. There, this yep. is not a very strong pass rusher draft, and everybody wants pass rushers. He'll probably be – the first pass rusher taken, maybe second if somebody. Your fast pass rusher. Yeah. yeah. Now, I can't remember, and it may not have ever happened. I'd love to check on this. The last time the first 10 picks in the draft featured no defensive linemen or pass rushers, I should say. But it looks like pay, the way this draft pay, is shaping pay, up. <laughs> I, I think pay goes. Look, I could see the Lions taking him because they're all about these, you know, blue chip, uh, blue, yeah. you know, like hardcore. Oh, they need pass club. rushers. Oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. They they're they going to eat people's rushers. kneecaps yeah. and do all these crazy things. <laughs> Dan Campbell. I could see the Lions going going there at seven. That's about as high as I think he would go. Uh, I, I I had a guy say, listen, don't count anything out with him because he's a, he has a chance to be a superstar. I'm like, wow, boy, I really missed on him. I didn't realize how, as you just said, though, law, law of supply and demand. Mm -hmm. But this is where the positional value yep. for the Eagles matches where they're picking. That's okay. the lowest I think he would go at 12. Um, okay. J.C. Horn, I, 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 I'm not going to be wrong about this. It's the top-rated corner. I don't think it's even close right now. Uh, based on tape study and mm -hmm. you know you know his dad is joe horn of course but going through the tape from guys seeing the tape character uh speed his workout was out of out of control great way better athlete than certain juniors obviously certain the second is very talented don't get mm -hmm. me wrong mm -hmm. horn barring a major surprise will be the first corner off the board and the latest to go will be 12 at the eagles now the question is if you're, if you're, um, let me give you, let me, let me give this to you. What mm -hmm. would you do? You know, all the Eagles needs pay horn, certain Slater, Devonte Smith are there. What do you do? All right. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on a limb right now and say this. I don't think the Eagles are going to take either Alabama wide receiver, even if he's there, What? unless all those guys you mentioned are gone. I just don't think they're going to take a wide receiver at 12. If a pass rusher, an offensive lineman or a cornerback uh -huh. of the ilk that you just mentioned are there. Yeah. I so I know you. that's going to disappoint a lot of people. And I'll tell you this also, and I think you would agree with me. I've seen it said that people uh, that Howie Roseman moved down to 12 because he knows that he can get Waddle or Smith. One of their, one of those two there. Wow. I don't, it's, it's impossible. When you move down to 12 and there's 11 people picking ahead of you, uh -huh. even if you know the three are going to be quarterbacks, it's just impossible to know you're definitely going to get. I understand. In fact, guys. I don't. So I don't believe how he made that move, knowing he's definitely getting one of those two guys. Oh, well, I don't. I don't think Waddle even. I would be shocked if Waddle gets out of the top ten. I, I don't see it. We'll he, see. He, I, I don't know. With the, with the, see, everybody thought last year that Jerry Judy was going to be a top five, top six pick, and then it wasn't until like a couple of days before Denver. the draft that got out yeah. of bounds. He went low. I mean, he went way lower than people thought. And Ruggs wound up going Denver, higher yeah. than people thought. Yeah. So the Raiders aren't picking in the top ten this year. So I can already tell you that I, you know I'm not <laughs> sure Dante Smith is going to go ten. Nor nor am I sure that J.C. Horn will because those are the type of players the Raiders would would just gobble up in a second. Well, well Horn is. They're all twitched I, up. I mean, I just. I hear scouts and a position coach just rave about this kid. And they all, when like 10 to 12 people agree, they're not old guys telling me last year, Justin Jefferson could only play in the inside. Right. right. I'm going to have to get, get back. I have my notes. I've saved them. I'm going to get on those guys when I call them soon. Right. No, um, so to answer your question well, about it's only all one year, guys, but good. Yeah. To answer your question yeah. about all those guys, I think it would either yeah. be if Slater is, it, it, I'd have to know what they, if they don't think Slater can play left tackle, I'm not sure it makes sense for them to go get, uh, him if he's if he can't play I would agree with you I, I would say that yeah, I don't I don't think they would do it well, think, well again yeah they, I, I just say, I think corner tackle. or quitty pay it, to me are, are what make the most sense right now of what you know whether fair horn very fair horn or the the Alabama kid uh certain or quitty pay those are the three I would say All right now 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 Caleb Farley because of his surgery yeah I, I it's we have four weeks left I don't know yet where I I, he, I'm expecting second half of the first round. I couldn't tell you where yet. I, I have to get more idea of when, how team, you know, it's only, see, the draft is never about one season. It's about you're hopeful for eight to 10 years, but mm -hmm. 
if your team, if you're a good football team that doesn't, is not worried about when he'll be ready, you're good with taking him where you're picking. If you're in the, uh, if you're in the top 20, if you're a team that needs a guy to play right away, you may be concerned. Look, he's, he's going to be ready for training camp, but how much is he going to be ready? Will he be ready to be himself? Cause he's, is he going to miss the entire all season? We just don't know yet. And we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have more on him, but I just, with Jeff and I've just kind of outlined you the, re, the, the, the pick tar, the, the pick areas, as we call it, um, of the top half of the first round where the Eagles right now are picking. But again, with this football team, you just never know. You never know. Exactly. All right. Let's uh, move on. Adam will uh, remind everybody to check out our friends at PHL sports nation.com enhancing the fans experience with their coverage of all of the Philadelphia professional sports teams, great coverage, great podcasts, great content. So make sure you're checking them out, phlsportsnation.com. And um, you can find them on Twitter, at PHL Sports Nation on Twitter. Let's pause real quick for a word from our other great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. All right, if you go head into uh, Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them, Adam and Jeff sent you, you will get a great deal. And, and yep. And I wanted to just add that it, when, when I started doing research, cause I did some business with them. I went on, I'm big on I'm, most people will do this. You want to read reviews. So I went to cars.com dealer, Raider.com Google reviews. Mm-hmm. Cause when I'm making a big, you know, a car purchase or a trade, whatever the heck it is. I'm, this is a big deal. So, if I read 500 reviews, that's probably I'm underestimating. I would say if I read 500, they were either five stars or four and a half, all of them. So it's legitimate that uh, Brett Shoulder, the owner, is, you know, we've gotten to know him a little bit. He's phenomenal. The, if, the thing that if you, it's very consistent. If you read the reviews, they're almost all the same. No pressure. Um, very thorough. You get a call right back. No pressure. Because the thing that I cannot stand when I when I retail shop, Jeff, is that when they land on you, you know, you walk into whatever store it is, they maybe either on you. Yeah. You don't need. I hate that. Yeah. And they didn't do that. that I'm Sky a sucker. I'll I'm, be like, yes, fine, fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's your 2006 Yugo, Jeff. Thanks. Right. <laughs> right. Oh my god. Only cost you 75 grand. Good job. Or they, uh, <laughs> not 74 Pinto, but. No, they do a great job. And um, if, again, if you don't believe me, go to, go to cars.com, dealerator.com. And to finish that out with Sky Motor Cars, go to the website, skymotorcars.com. And also, uh, majority of their business, they do online. So look at their online inventory or go into Westchester, right off 202 and see them in person. Yeah, buy it online. We buy everything online now. Might as well, you know, have the Amazon truck. Pretty much roll, every, roll what, out the car for I, <laughs> Other than get groceries, do you buy anything in person? <laughs> I don't think so. No, <laughs> I even have groceries uh, started to be delivered. Sure. Now, so, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I haven't bought anything in person in quite yeah. a while. Uh, I don't have any money though. So that's probably, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, I hear you, man. I hear you. All right. Let's get into, uh, so the Eagles have had some comings and goings in free agency. Uh, we know that they've signed Anthony Harris. We know they brought in Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco had his press conference. People wanted him to kiss Jalen Hurts' ring <laughs> apparently and say he's going to be a mentor. Uh, that that never happens, by the way. I I don't remember any press conference of a backup uh, who has come in and said, "I'm here to just, you know, not be fined. Like I'm here to just be a backup." Right. No, I mean every every backup who has some cachet to him, the way Joe Flacco does, basically says, "I'm here to compete." And it's not like Joe said, "I expect to start." He just said, "Look, I'm I'm here to compete and show everybody I'm not an old guy anymore." I I didn't right. understand like the whole hubbub like exactly that. I saw it come out there and, exactly. and you know say I'm I'm just a plebeian here. No, I mean that's just not how it works. I, I would hope I would hope that he I understand that if he goes don't draft a quarterback and this you know if they don't trade up for quarterback whatever where they don't trade for Watson, which I would think would be highly, 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 highly unlikely based on what's been going on lately, that it'll be Hertz and Flacco and someone they draft is the third quarterback. And Hertz will be the starter under that scenario. Mm -hmm. And and if Joe could have a good training camp and push him, just when I say push him, what you liked it, and I've seen it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen where we know who the starter is, but the backup pushes him, has a great camp, and the starter knows that, man, I better – I better raise my game. And that's what you want for competition. That's what coaches will tell you. Mm-hmm. I want this guy to push him. And also in the meeting rooms, it's just a veteran. You love having the veteran presence of a guy that's 
been there, done it before. I get that Joe Flacco's never been a superstar. I get all that. He's quite frankly, if you look at his career, he's been above average is good, never better than that, except for 12, that playoff run, which is historic. He's you no, know, look, the guy's got an enormous arm. Ten but playoff wins, man. I mean, I I, think, I get listen, I, but I'm I'm a right. Big, he's never been a top five quarterback, but he's I, been above average. And I know yeah. they don't throw a lot, but but the, the issue with Flacco, and we'll talk to Greg Cosell about this, is my one issue with him is this. With that arm strength and that size, and by the way, he can move. He's not stationary. I don't know that he's elevated players around him as much until that historic run in 2012. Right. It was just, just that ridiculous. run, yeah. Flash in the pan type thing. And that, yeah. that would be my issue with, with a guy with this ability. Why wasn't he better than that? And he would miss too many throws over the years where I go, man, he should – yeah, he's, de- he's definitely that. definitely not perfect. Uh, no, I but, but he was again, he's pretty he, good though. I mean, when he yeah. like, I'm talking about earlier, first five or six years of his career. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, it, to sum this up, to move this forward here, at this mm-hmm. point of his career, the Eagles won him with the three point five million dollars you're owing him. Push the kid in training camp. Look good. If the kid doesn't play well, hurts in his first full use full use season as a starter. And when I say that, I put an asterisk. Who the hell knows what the Eagles going to do here? They may. Tr- who knows? Right. Who knows? Right. As we speak right now, Monday morning, we're assuming Hertz is going to be the starter. It will be nice when they have a training camp. Hopefully, the training camp will be longer than last mm-hmm. year. That Flacco has it has something left in the tank, which he should. He's healthy. He was not. Remember, he missed all of last, uh, not only offseason. Um, he signed late, and then he uh, could not practice during training camp because the neck had to heal. Right. And he just – he only started the four games, and he had not worked with these guys. Really tough if you've never worked with anyone. It's all of a sudden to be thrown in there for four games. He only had the one good game out of the three. But the one good game was really, really – I don't want to say exceptional. It was really good. The tape was pretty good, I'm told. Mm-hmm. So you just hope that he can do that. And his contract, just like Harris's, by the way, we should touch on this, <laughs> almost mirror images. We had a couple questions about this. I'll address it before we move on. Mm-hmm. Both have four-year voids. One-year contract. To per, uh, for bo- sign and bonus paration, they spread it out with four dummy years slash voidable years, mm-hmm. the same thing. So they're doing. And by the way, the Eagles are not the only team doing this. I'm seeing a ton of teams do this, Jeff. It's not anything new, but you know why they're doing it? Because, because they the cap I, didn't go up, right? And they did not want to cut football players, right? We told you this a month ago. You're not going to see, despite what the, the national media, some of the national media was scaring people about. Mm-hmm. Teams were generally not going to cut players. They'd rather. Credit card spend for the future. We don't mm-hmm. recommend it, but they're doing it because they want to keep their jobs and they they want to keep like the Bucks, right? They right. never did this kind of stuff, right? But they're doing it to, to to they want to run it back. But a lot of teams are doing it because they just don't want to cut team players, right? And, and in the case here of Harris and Flacco, this is different than the other guys we've mentioned uh, on the team, like your your Brandon Brookses or your Darius Slays, because the, the the amount of money that's getting pushed into the next few years is minuscule. Right. I mean, they're getting most of their money this year. It's just that you could just take a fraction of it and divide it over the next few years. So if you have to cut these, well, they're expected to be cut because they're they're voidable years or dummy years. It's not like a 20 million dollar cap hit for one guy. It's just in some cases, I mean, you you probably have the numbers in front of you. It may not even be more than two million. So. Oh, yeah. In fact, um, Harris's uh, base salary, I think this year is nine, 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 ninety, nine hundred ninety thousand. Right. Less than a million, but of course, with the signing bonus, he'll get the cash first year. Cash will be what it you know, four or five million, yeah. But then you've got the proration for the dummy years, right? Um, man, it, it just I, I, I don't have time to go through 32 teams' contracts, although I may spend a Saturday if I got two or three hours looking. I'm, I'm just curious because it, it, it got so out of hand. I, I was like, this is unbelievable. The amount of one year deals with with um, dummy years added on the back of it, with so many teams are doing it. And hey, I get it. One eighty two five is your cap this year, uh, plus um, you know carryover. So I understand why teams are doing it. Yeah, I understand it too. So um, all right. So and let me just quickly put to rest this assertion by some that I've seen that the Eagles sign Flacco so that if if Jalen Hurts does get hurt, that Flacco will go in and the team will automatically be bad because it would be they don't want to be good. <laughs> What I, I don't even know where to begin with that. It gives where them a better chance. I'm not even going to name the names. I'm just okay. saying, 
that's what I've seen out there. Now, why would you, if you wanted to be bad, why would you bring back Jason Kelsey? Why would you, why would you reach what, what, what? like even, why would you even sign Joe Flacco there? If what I is, saw this, I would, would say this have much. A, this should... a backup quarterback who had no experience whatsoever. If that's what you wanted, like you would just draft the guy in the <laughs> fifth round Say, all right, you're the guy. If Jalen Hurts gets hurt, and we'll go I, lose I every game. The, if if I saw this on Twitter, they would have been muted. I just would uh, get it off my timeline. I don't want to see this. Like what? It, it, the, <laughs> the, the dumb Twitter takes, like the the hot t- like I, I've never been a hot take guy. I don't even know what that means. Jeff and I don't do hot takes. We give you information. Sometimes, yeah, we get pissed off when mm-hmm. the Eagles do something stupid, which they could could have clearly avoided. We'll call them out when we think we need they need to be called out, but. We don't, we're not hot take guys. We want you to learn something. When you start having venom against some people, you don't learn. You have to speak with a clear mind, though you some t- times come in with some juice and yep. some, you know, some, some attitude. I get that. But you got to speak with a clear mind. You can't hold grudges against people. You can certainly feel like the team didn't do a good job in certain things. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But when you start th- thinking like, these are purposely doing something stupid. Like, what planet are you on? Yeah, it did, that one didn't compute. Really? Me, but I just wanted to uh, put it out there that they wow. signed Joe Flacco because if they need to play him, they think he's actually good enough to win games for them, uh, yeah. you know, if they if they have to go to the backup. All right, so the Eagles lost two guys this past week. They lost Nate Gary to uh, the San Francisco 49ers. I don't think anybody's going to miss him. Uh, <laughs> good luck to the 49ers. I'm sure he'll be for them what he should be, and that's maybe a fourth or a fifth linebacker. Oh, and, uh, he, he won't, I tell you, he, though, it'll be damning if he plays well out there. He, he won't play. I, I would be – the way I understood is that they – team saw Nate Gary as a special teams player. Uh-huh. And if he has to play dress on game day, as you're talking about, wouldn't be a fourth uh, – he'd be a fifth or sixth linebacker. He, he's a guy that was so limited. I understand that Ken Flagell thought he was, like, really smart. And I, I'm not going to argue that. The guy mm-hmm. coached him. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is the guy was a below-average football player and had no business being a starter. Whether he's in, however they, when I say start, he basically Eagles are a nickel team. They were a nickel team under Jim Schwartz. So I, 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 that means two linebackers. But the fact of the matter is, the guy was not good enough. And the Eagles didn't want to bring him back. And um, you know, the Niners, they, he worked out for the Niners last week. Johnny Clark says it's a one year deal. And he's got, he's a long shot to make the team. And good luck to him. He's a nice kid. And it's uh, former college safety. And he, he actually had that 17 draft. <laughs> it actually worked out. But I think if we're being honest, he never should have. St- he never should have been a starter. Never. Oh uh, man! If you and I, in sometime in October, late October, are talking about this Niners defense looking pretty good, and and for some by hook or crook that Nate Gary is some kind of significant piece of it. I qu- I'm, just I like quit. Nelson Aguilar and Sidney Jones. You know, so I'm gonna say, oh man, oh, Russell I don't know Douglas goes somewhere. <laughs> Although I, I mean, I'd be shocked if he went back back to Carolina. But if he went back to Carolina, Russell Douglas and started like that's the kind of stuff that you go. How does this stuff happen? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right. So with the, we mentioned this before. Now that Vinny Curry is a Jet, he signs yeah. with the uh, Jets. I thought there should have been an opportunity or could have been an opportunity to bring Vinny Curry back because you don't have a lot of depth at D end right now. You've got Brandon Graham. You've got Derek Barnett. And then your best backup is Josh Sweat. We talk all the time. Josh Sweat is a min- is, has his reps uh counted kind of because they don't want to play him too much and Barnett has a history of getting hurt Brandon's north of 32 I thought it would be all right idea to to bring Vinny Vinny back on a one year he's not so you kind of look at the DN landscape to see if the Eagles want to put you know bring in a different veteran and I couldn't help but you know you notice that Jadavion Clowney is out there Adam and he was a guy that you reported last year the Eagles were interested in it's just that the price was going to be too high you know he's correct constantly hurt and um, as Greg Cosell has said to us on our platforms he doesn't think he's the the gr- most refined pass rusher and when you're dealing he's with- not a fan Greg's yeah. not a fan I mean, Greg, he- Greg Cosell's not a fan and I think the last three years have shown you why I mean he is yeah. he it's not he is hurt a lot but he's also look he's tenacious he's very aggressive and physical but mm-hmm. when you're talking about the art of pass rushing and having moves in an arsenal he seems to be either shot out of a cannon or he's just not going to get there you know so he's not he's not as refined as correct that's better, a better very good way to rushers. put it um, but, but if the price is really low adam i think yeah. you got to consider that the eagles will poke around on this i mean they I, will I would be surprised yeah i I, uh, I think that when I, the, the place i got quoted everywhere this last year mm-hmm. and it's typically happens with bloggers as a former blogger i could tell you it's really important to quote people correctly because sometimes we have to chase the bloggers down yes so 
with these little eagle uh what do you call them um instagram accounts it's like eagles news one two three four five six seven eight nine whatever they call themselves on instagram <laughs> they're like a hundred of them there are but all i want to say is this i'm not saying they're going to sign them i'm not even saying they're going to make an offer mm -hmm. but i do believe if the price is right if if he's a depressed asset i don't even know what his he made 15 million for tennessee last year which is way too high it's way too much money for guys Stole money Whew. what's that Stole money right there. Yeah, a lot of money it, 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 with this injury history, but I would I would I would expect the Eagles to check it out and see where he's at, and that's it. I'm not expecting him to sign here, but um, again, they had interest last year. They never made an offer. They just checked into it. I expect them to check into it just because that's what you do. When guy he we're entering now the third week of free agency. Okay, he's not as far as I know. He's not, wait, did he have surgery again? I, I, I've got, I can't keep up with all his surgeries. I don't know. So I don't know. All I know but, is... But, I, but, but again, yeah, he didn't do well. But look, if, if you're any NFL team, if you get this guy for five to seven million, I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know what he's asking. I don't know what he's asking for yet. But it, the Eagles were not going to pay anywhere even close to 10 last year for him. But if you're a team that... And the Eagles are tight against the cap again. Plus, they have to sign the rookies. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to be, if he's want to take five or seven million, I mean, you got to talk to the agent. He changed the agency. He doesn't bust cook anymore. Right. Um, but if if you're uh, Kennard McGuire and you're the Eagles, you got to call the guy and see what, what he's looking for. That's all. No doubt about it. And by the way, last year I played eight games, started all eight, zero sacks, six quarterback hits, four tackles for a loss. I mean, Brutal. you're talking about Brutal. like three years ago, this guy had 21 hits, 21 tackles for a loss, nine and a half sacks. Even with Seattle in 2019, other than the, the hit he put on Carson in the playoffs, right? He had three sacks in 13 games. 13 quarterback hits, seven tackles for loss. That's just not worth $15 million. And, and I, I would tell you, um, just to add this before we move on to the next player or before we get out of mm -hmm. here, I had a team tell me that graded his tape after 19. They said he was still super raw, not very good with technique. Now, remember, he, had the, he would wind up having the uh, – the surgery from Dr. Myers um, after the season. But the fact of the matter is he's still very raw. He's, he's whether it's been coaching or injuries or whatever, he's not even close to the player that he could have been or should have been. But as Greg Cosell has told me for years, when grading his tape, he just doesn't see it. He, right. he, as you were talking about, it's a, he's more of a flash player. Yes. It's not very consistent, but that what he's had some years where we go, okay, He's on to something, but just is unable to sustain it due to injury. Yeah. I mean, if you can bring in this guy on a bargain one-year deal, I think it makes sense. If if you have to pay him $13 million, 12, I'm not sure that that That's makes a lot. sense. That's yeah. a lot. For, I wouldn't do yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't Hell either. No. I wouldn't either. All right, real quick, before we get out of here, just a, a quick kind of update on, on what the Eagles still need. Now, they have their, their quarterback and backup quarterback. They still need a number three quarterback. I'm surprised people are surprised by that, but – um. You know, the, the idea that they might draft somebody late, I, I certainly think they would most carry three or four. I don't know. I yeah. Like I said last podcast, I, I tweeted that don't be surprised if they take a quarterback late in the draft, fifth, sixth, seventh, as a developmental guy. And and people thought, well, that was a waste of a pick. And I don't, I don't see that. How is it a waste of a pick? I don't know. If, if the guy winds up becoming a guy who can play in the NFL and can be a legit backup to your starter, then it's not a waste AJ of a pick. AJ Feely, Hello. There you go. A.J. Feely is a great Brown? example. I mean, there are, there are a thousand examples of, of guys who were drafted. I mean, they missed on Clayton Thorson. Okay, but – Gardner Minshew. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever. Uh, so we agree that they'll probably – they will get another quarterback in some form or fashion. Still need a running back. Okay. So, uh, again, LeGarrette Blunt didn't sign until May. So we'll see if they either use the draft or – I would think – Free agency. Yeah, I would, I would think a back with size – I said this earlier when we were talking about positions – I would think more draft, but as you just said, if if you get past the draft and the guys who you thought should have been signed and you you could get them for the veteran minimum, by right. all means, take the guy. Sure. If he's got size. Absolutely. Know? Right. Wide receiver, you mentioned they still need a veteran, so I agree with you there. Offensive line, I think you and I both agree that it would be shocking if they go through an entire draft without taking at least one. So we'll see uh, on that. Um Defensive tackle, defensive end, we addressed. We expect that to be addressed uh, in the draft, and then maybe still in free agency. Linebackers, they're gonna they're gonna address linebackers in the draft. They I, have I, to. I, oh I, my I god, I can't imagine that they won't. Oh, can't imagine. And, and, other than Erickson, who? Not um, what's his name? They got Singleton and Edwards. Singleton, yeah, Singleton. Yeah, and then how we'll many, see with Davion Taylor. 
Dave Van Taylor, we just don't know anything about the guy. So, right. hell yeah. They need yeah. three. They need to add three, quite frankly. By, by training camp, they have to add three. Yeah, uh, I saw someone commented on our on our YouTube channel and said, no, they don't want it because they drafted two linebackers last year. I mean, you can't I, I, put Dave Van Taylor aside. They drafted Sean Bradley in the sixth round. He's a, Nobody folks, expects folks, a sixth round pick to become a, a significant player. No, no offense. Sean Bradley's a great kid. Yeah, great kid. Try hard guy. He's a fifth or sixth linebacker. That's what he is. If he makes a team, I mean, every right. year when you're a six round pick, unless you establish yourself like Jason Kelsey, then you're not, you're fighting yeah. for your, your roster spot I mean, every year. Yeah. Come on. Those guys have like a 5% chance of survival yeah. in the NFL. Um, so linebacker, we talked about, all right, safety corner, probably going to have to address. Well, they already addressed safety with free agency. We'll see what they do in the draft corner. I still think heavily draft, but I agree with you, Adam. Three, they brother, something. three. They'll need one. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to draft three corners. No, 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 maybe, but they but... need three outside corners. I don't care how they get them, draft or free agency. Yeah. They got to – they have one guy that could line up today. Right. We're only in – we're, we're basically in April here. You, they they cannot line up today. They just couldn't. <laughs> but the oh. season's not until September, but they, they got to have three – they got to have three outside corners. Now, if you want to play Craig James as your fourth corner, you can play inside or outside. All right, I'll accept that. You made a good point earlier. Mm -hmm. But, man, I still want three. That's just me. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Mackenzie Alexander wound up signing back. What was Did he sign with the, the Vikings? Vikings again? Yeah, Vikings. he re-signed. So yep. that was a guy we thought might, oh, it's, might it, have interest in the, yeah, the Eagles. The, the, he was the last good young guy that I saw on my list. Mm -hmm. Now it's the, the you know, the Casey Hayward's a good football player, but he's in his 30s. Yeah, um, you know. I, I'm interested in him. He used to be pretty good, and I know he's in his 30s. But he had the concussion point, issue earlier in his career. But, yeah, yeah. he's uh, – it's not a good sign, though, that a team like the Chargers, who are not very good, are walking away from him. Yeah, and or that he's still unsigned because he was a fairly yeah. good player uh, yeah. for a couple of years out there. So In his 30s now, but I get it. Yeah. All right, so we'll see what happens. I know, uh, again, Tuesday morning we'll have uh, Greg Cassell inside our, our first inside – the draft with Greg Cosell, Wednesday morning Q&A, Thursday morning, you and I will be back at it with Inside the Birds pod. And then, of course, Tuesday night, we'll have our Ask ITB live stream at 8 o'clock. So it's going to be a busy week for ITB. You can't get enough I know we'll have a lot of questions. Yeah, you can't get enough of us, folks. We're not going away. No, no. <laughs> as much as some would like us to, it's yes. not going to happen. Especially me. I get it. I know there, <laughs> I know there are haters out there. Yeah. It's all good. Well, those we are love just, you. those are just really all my burner accounts and I have to, <laughs> yeah. I just got to Wait a minute, you know, is Mrs. Calangelo running them? No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I don't know, as far as all you right. know. Anyway. That will do it for this edition of Inside the Birds the leading podcast at Eagles Intel. Thanks to our producer Hunter Brody. Check out his channel on YouTube. It's called Sports Talk with Broads. Check out his Twitter account at Broads81. And as always, we thank you for flying with us Inside the Birds.